Hello, this is Bob Floyd with the Twin Cities Bicycling Club and I'm here today with another Ride with GPS tutorial. This one is called Editing Part 1 and it's about the cue sheets or the cues. So we'll check the cues for accuracy, we'll edit them, we'll add new cues, we'll delete cues, and we'll add point of interest. So the first thing I'll do is click on plan. I'll, I'll just create a new route. We'll jump to Hugo, Minnesota, where I am pretty familiar with a route that I've been riding there for a while. And we'll remove this uh, start marker and move over closer to Festival Foods. So th this will be my ride start on Frenchman Road. I check now that I'm on follow roads and driving because this is a road ride for for the first part of it and I don't want to get distracted by having the uh, ride with GPS jump onto trails at least not yet. So I'll move up here and uh, you can see the elevation graph is starting to show up and that's at the moment that's just in the way it's taking up screen space that I would rather have so I'll get rid of that zoom out so I can make bigger clicks get farther down the road quicker so we're gonna switch to ride or trail mode or cycling mode here in a moment and go down the Hardwood Creek Trail so I'll switch to cycling mode, click on the trail here, then we'll go up to 4th Street on the trail. I'm going to switch back to driving mode, just so I don't forget. And then I'm going to back up a little bit and add a rest stop. Kodiak Coffee is the rest stop. I'm going to do two things for this rest stop. I'm going to add it as a point of interest. So I clicked on Add POI. I'll click on the route. I'll call it a food stop. Type in the name. Now if I had a URL for Kodiak Coffee that people could uh, click on and look at Kodiak Coffee and see what's there, uh, I'd put it in there. Uh, I'm not going to bother right now. The thing about point of interest to remember is that it only shows up in a browser browser window. It will not show up on a printed map. So to get your rest stop to show up on a printed map, well I'll save this first, we would do add to cue sheet, or that means add a cue to the cue sheet. Click on that, I'll click on the route in the same general spot. I'll call this food and I like to call my rest stops optional and that should do that I'll scroll down here and you can see the optional rest stop at Kodiak Coffee so now we're ready to continue down the, the route. I'll zoom back out again. And we'll go around for oops, yeah, I have to go back to follow roads. We'll go down the North Shore Drive. And uh, this is kind of my standard way of going around here. Go down Jamica and Jeffrey and then continue alongside the lake get on to Scandia Trail down Manning Avenue or Manning Trail and uh, I'll just click down here here's my second optional rest stop I'll do this one just like the other now that's interesting it disappears when I zoom in so I'll uh, add point of interest
and call it convenience store and save that and then I'll add that to the cue sheet call that food again so that does that you can see that has shown up here and then I'll continue down the way here let's see I'm gonna get on a trail again switch to cycling and we're back on the Hardwood Creek Trail again and uh, we end up jumping back onto the main drag just before Frenchman Road, which takes us back to the ride start. Switch back to driving mode, and then I'll zoom in and get fairly close to the ride start. Uh, so that I'll call my finale. I'll save the route. I'll just call it Test 2. I'm going to make it private because because uh, it just well, doesn't need to be public and I'll save it so I, I like to save after at this point usually I figure I've got enough invested that it's time to save now what I always do here and I think everyone should always do this is click on the view your route here that would switch you out of edit mode and into view mode on your route. If you were to hit close, you would be back in edit mode and you would be in danger of hitting that save button and generating umpteen different files with the same name. So you'd get, you know, you could have eight or ten test two routes, all of them a little different. Uh, as you edit more and more. So I my rule is only one save per edit and then go out of edit into view mode and then back into edit. So one edit or one save per edit is the rule. So now we're in view mode going back into edit mode the easy way and now we're gonna get rid of the elevation graph going to zoom in a little bit and then we'll go through our cues and check them for accuracy. So the cues are along the left here and I'll click on this first one. So the, the cue sheet actually will have something about the ride start at mile 0, 0.0 but here I've got a, a cue a tenth of a mile down so Frenchman Road and uh, it turns into Main Street and so uh, you know I think that's kind of one of those cues that a person really doesn't need so I'm gonna delete it and uh, we'll move right along here so at mile 1.1 there's a right turn and so on so I'm gonna keep on going here's another name change uh, not sure I really need that one either so I'm gonna delete it and then our next one is turn left on Gander Drive and this is continue on to Zurich uh, you know what I often do is I'll edit the Gander Drive one and say and then continue on to Zurich when the change is pretty close at hand you know the continue on to a road is pretty close at hand I don't mind just combining two cues into one and so we'll delete this second one I think that helps not to have a, a bunch of extra cues for people to stare at so now we'll move up to Lake Drive Camp Camp 3 Road 
I don't really like these when they say at the first cross street it doesn't really have meaning to me so I, I like to to uh, just get rid of the first cross street thing and just say turn right onto so now it's it says turn right onto Kettle River Boulevard which reads easier you can see there's a brown icon there that indicates that I have edited a queue and so turn right what the heck I don't know what that is oh I've made a little mistake there so I will fix that and that queue will be corrected so okay so we'll recheck these here's another one so what I'll do here is I'll just copy this queue that I'm going to get rid of control C for control copy and then I'll delete it and then on this one I'll put that in so I just get a paste so it's it now it now reads turn right onto Howard Lake Drive Northeast and then continue on to 220th Street North that's the way I think is best but to each his own so now we'll turn left onto Howard Creek Trail I don't think we need to know two different names for this trail so I'm going to get rid of the second one so I have tweaked that the little brown indicator is hiding behind the mileage thing okay And so this is a another one of these cues that doesn't do any have any value, so I'm going to delete it. Now here's the cue that I put in for the Kodiak coffee. There is another cue that isn't very useful. Take the pedestrian overpass ramp. There's really no choice there. I'm familiar with the area. And so now we've gotten rid of a bunch of ambiguous things. And uh just going to move down the way here see what else pops up oops yeah this one North Shore Drive North Shore Trail no cyclist is really going to care so I'll get rid of another trail queue and uh, move on down now yeah this one is Let's see what's going on here. So apparently we're on 235th, then we're on Itasca, then we're back on it again. That's not real useful either, so I'm getting rid of, of some of this. But you can see how you can you can spend a little time getting this right but on the other hand you help your riders a whole lot so here's the rest stop at Big Marine and we're heading back again I'm gonna get rid of the extra verbiage here and that that completes that so we have covered the testing your cue sheet or checking it out editing cues 
adding cues, deleting cues, and putting in point of interest. Thanks for staying tuned this long. Bye now.